very good afternoon ellarku namaskara i welcome you all to this live webinar today which would be on effective handling of grievances in the time of covid 19 pandemic especially highlighting the karnataka model and my name is sudhir gautam i'm the senior assistant editor and bureau head with the elets techno media private limited um we at elets have uh, embarked on a rigorous campaign during the uh, corona crisis uh, uh, bringing on board several experts policy makers from across the country and global experts from various other uh, parts of the globe uh, today we would be uh, focusing on one of the important aspects that is uh, the grievances in the time of corona crisis and i'm very glad to bring to you a very inspiring personality uh, as a key speaker uh, uh, she uh, is an administrative innovator uh, a public service officer who is passionate about reaching out to the people and making a difference uh, uh, bringing out uh, the best uh, uh, best of initiatives in the society she is a woman topper of 1918 uh, 1989 is batch and she's also uh, she uh, dons many hats she's also have authored over 13 books eight in english and three uh, uh, or five in kannada uh, which uh, uh, covers various uh, subjects including uh, women empowerment personality development uh, management and also rural development she has done her um, masters in uh, uh, she's a gold medalist in psychology she has also done her management from australia she has uh, done her phd in rural development we had the opportunity uh, uh, to work with her uh, when she was a principal secretary uh, uh, heading the department health family and uh, uh, medical department and uh, she currently heads the uh, planning program monitoring and uh, statistic department with the government of karnataka uh, she has uh, set an example through her exemplary leadership uh, she is also known uh, for her exemplary work uh, for steering uh, state legislation for karnataka uh, karnataka uh, state uh, uh, service uh, to the uh, citizens uh, act in 2011 Uh, which is uh, uh, popularly known as sakala and she has also backed uh, uh, prime minister's award for excellence in civil services she has also backed a uh, national award for the second best panchayat uh, raj in 2012 i'm glad she has joined us today she would be uh, uh, highlighting various initiatives that's been taken in the state of karnataka um um she is an inspiring personality she is uh, have also uh, uh, introduced several e hospital initiatives when she was heading the health department and one of the inspiring uh, initiatives by her is uh, uh, enabling people to live even after their death by uh, donating a body organs by introducing a online registration initiative we would also be touching upon those aspects where people can donate uh, their organs and can leave uh, enabling them to live even after their death uh, i've heard if i'm not wrong uh, each uh, person can make over eight uh, lives uh, to live after the donation so join me in welcoming dr shalini rajnish she is the additional chief secretary heading the department of statistics program monitoring and also uh, uh program monitoring with the government of karnataka welcome ma'am to this live webinar today thank you very much and uh, uh, to moderate this session we have yet another prominent person who is the founder ceo uh, for the elets techno media private limited uh, dr ravi gupta he is uh, uh, known for promoting uh, the uh, for promoting the e governance and technology in the field of uh, various sectors uh, including uh, it uh, health education and also banking and finance in india 
So, Dr. Ravi Gupta is all is an IITN from uh, Kanpur, and uh, we would also be hearing uh, from him moderating this session. Welcome, Dr. Ravi Gupta, to this live webinar. Thank you. So, I would request you please uh, take on this live. Webinar. Sure. Thank you, Sudhi. Uh, I welcome Dr. Shalini Rajneesh ji. And uh, as we are all uh, going through this COVID-19 crisis, uh, I would like to uh, request you to talk about the response of your department, uh, which is the Department of Planning, Programming, Monitoring and Statistics Department. How uh, this department has uh, taken up the role of uh, combating the COVID-19 situation and how your efforts and your department's efforts are helping the citizens. Dr. Shalini. Thank you very much, uh, Raviji and uh, Sudhir. And let me first thank ELET's uh, Technomedia for uh, stirring up the knowledge economy during the days of <laughs> lockdown, where rest of the other things were really uh, almost coming to a standstill. I think it's a brilliant uh, move on your part, uh, as innovative as you always are, to ensure that people make best use of their resources, their time, and uh, in all in public interest. So in that context, I'm very happy to join you today uh, to talk about the grievance management in the context of uh, COVID-19 in Karnataka. I would like to share my presentation with you while I explain the details. Um, yes. As you know that at the national level, there is a, a national disaster management committee, which is headed by the cabinet secretary. Similarly, at the state level, there is a uh, state level um, uh, uh, disaster management committee and uh, we had 15 committees which were set up by the chief secretary to monitor different activities so starting from health and uh, logistics and food and so on there were so many of them one of them was on grievance redressal and I was made the chairperson of that uh, committee and I was assisted ably by two of my senior IAS colleagues, Mr. Tushar Girinath and Mr. Manish Modgil. And we three used to work along with other officers of different departments and ensure that the uh, grievances of the people which were registered on different platforms were speedily responded by the state government machinery. We used to get about almost 1.8 lakh uh, calls every day. And uh, as you can see that there are lots of helplines which are uh, done by the state government or the central government. Uh, to name a few that I've uh, listed here, you have the food and civil supplies uh, department. So 1967 is a national level uh, helpline toll free number. So every state will have to use this number. Like that we have state level uh, helplines also. For example, our uh, Bangalore, Brihat Bangalore, uh, Mahanagar Palike, that is the city corporation of Bengaluru, has its own helpline numbers. The agriculture department has created its own helpline numbers. Women and Child is again using the national numbers. Then we have the uh, Bangalore Water Supply and Sewerage Board, their helpline numbers. Then police department, again, across the country, 100 number is used. And another one is 112. Then you have the CP grams where you don't get calls, but you get email messages from uh, people on the portal, from the Ministry of um, Department of uh, Administrative Reforms, Government of India. It gets transmitted to different departments or states for redressal. Then we have an ambulance service, uh, which is 108. And in addition, another number 102 is uh, provided for the people. Then we have the health and family welfare uh, helpline, which is the biggest demand, that is 104. Uh, another uh, disaster management helpline is also provided and uh, so on. So with all these uh, put together, we used to get, uh, you know, we started with a lack and odd um, uh, complaints, but it went on as during the peak time of uh, lockdown, went on uh, increasing. So which means that although we were doing the wrestle, Yet the problems of the people were really uh, multiplying day in, day out. And there was so much to do uh, every minute. So uh, the process uh, as, as is prescribed, you know, to do the complaint uh, management is that 
once a complaint is received by the respective helpline they are supposed to forward it to either the state concerned department so if it is a health related you go to the health department and if it is a district related complaint because these are all centralized numbers so from the state headquarters it will be sent to the concerned deputy commissioners who then in turn manages within his or her team now uh, there the, the what happens is that you may send it to the login of the concerned people but what is important is a follow up he or she may not see the login he, they may not know how many have piled up and so on and also the issue is that um, uh, the the analytics somebody has to look after where is it that things are piling up so that you actually physically push it so the committee uh, on grievance management headed by me was doing a daily monitoring of uh, all the grievances uh, broken up into district wise and department wise and we have a portal for that uh, purpose for a couple of help uh, helplines and we would then uh, call up the person you know um, whether it is the deputy commissioner or the secretary concerned and say that look uh, please look into your login there are so many pending and please pull up all your respective uh, field officers down the line and see that it is quickly uh, followed up now just to have an analytics of what kind of complaints would we uh, get on a daily basis uh, one very big com uh, uh, not complaint i would say the call was on information so many people had a lot of curiosity lot of confusion also as to what's going on what is this lockdown what does it mean will i get vegetables will i get fruits uh, where do i go to the doctor if i have this symptom am i also covid patient and so on so forth so a lack and odd you know were only information seeking uh, kind of thing so the moment you give them the right information uh, then you know the problem is uh, sorted out there and then some of them were really action oriented uh, uh, activities which i have listed here uh, you you know that during lockdown many of the poor people particularly the laborers they would have uh, no source of income and they would ask for uh, some food to be given uh so the ration request or food request uh was one of the major uh, area of um, uh, calling people calling us on different helplines uh then we had people asking for travel help now the guidelines of the ministry of um, home affairs and uh, health department they were saying that only if you have a medical emergency can you travel but sometimes you'll find that you know there is a child left behind and the mother had actually gone out for work to a different district and she is stuck there and the child is with the grand grandparents and they are crying and things like that you know some other emergencies also were there which were not strictly uh, medical emergencies and they had to be looked at from a human humanitarian angle so those kind of uh, travel help were supposed to be handled by the police department because they were the ones who were supposed to give permission otherwise anybody coming without a travel permission on the road was uh, sort of really punished actually and sent back so uh, streamlining this particular thing was also very important uh, in coordination with the police department then lot of calls were on medical assistance now what happened was that some of them you know are uh, for example uh, having uh, diabetes now their uh, medicine has got over now, there's no online Uh, del uh, delivery of medical uh, you know medicines uh, to the to to your house so what do you do and you can't survive without them somebody may be a heart patient somebody may be a pregnant woman and things like that so these were all um, on one side for the medicines and another side is that you have to go to the hospital or the doctor uh, physically so telemedicine doesn't help so that is where we used to uh, provide actually a door delivery or door uh, service of our ambulances uh, and take them to the right uh, hospital or the doctor government doctor because that time even private doctors were not really available uh, so these um, you know, had to be physically attended to by actually sending a person or a vehicle in to 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 their uh, doorstep um, then there were some very interesting uh, complaints on uh, you know social distancing not being followed masks not being put as and when the rules were made and people used to say look that person is not following the rules or when we said that if you travel from uh, abroad you must get yourself uh, you know notified and you must have a check up and you must home quarantine yourself 
so people were very carefully watching what is coming in the news and they would also be a watchdog for others who were kind of violating the rules and that was also again a very helpful thing and we had to uh, go back to them and say that you have to follow the rule and whatever necessary protocol had to be followed was actually done on one to one basis some of the other complaints were initially on uh, you know the medical supplies of uh, sanitizers and masks not being available so we had to um, go to the concerned uh, place now what i'm showing here is the last last days that is yesterday's uh, pending uh, count but the numbers were huge uh, in the last one month because now they they've almost come down to uh, insignificant number i will now take you uh, to the journey as to how did we go about one attending to the uh, calls and complaints and another proactively creating a strategy by involving respective departments to ensure that future grievances are actually reduced so awareness generation as i said was very important when i said 1 lakh calls are only to know what is what uh, so what do you do you have an iec committee uh, and what they do is they cre they create lot of audio visual uh, material which was then circulated through all kinds of platforms whether in print or tv or radio or even social media um, and also by uh, because your house to house uh, announcements and all were much less yet even in the police vehicles we used to keep those audio cassettes uh, on and say this is what you have to do this is what you should not be doing and so on uh, so we even our committee uh, organized lot of uh, tv and radio phone in programs directly talking to them and ask them what their issues are and um, uh, i'm thankful to all the media partners for giving a, a very good coverage of uh, various issues now for example arogya setu was uh, announced by government of india so people uh, were told how to go about it what are the steps what's the utility so in the local language these kind of things were there and then uh, also the uh, the regulatory part of it people you know they told wear the mask so what if i don't wear the mask that's a natural tendency particularly of the youngsters what if i don't maintain the uh, distance uh, what if i spit because they are all um, so habituated to this so we have tried to also warn them that look you you can be punished and uh, both by imprisonment or fine so better avoid this so some people listen to uh, good sense and some people listen to uh, <laughs> a little bit of uh, punishment uh, being shown to them and either way things have to work now couple of uh, strategies that we followed by uh, while handling the individual reforms i like to share uh, on the masks and sanitizers and medicines as i mentioned there were also complaints that uh, the uh, prices are jacked up for example a mask which would otherwise cost 20 rupees was being sold for 120 rupees and you find sometimes hoarding happening and uh, overpricing happening so we made the um, drug controller department they are the ones who control the pharmacy so they had to be moved out into the uh, uh, into the colonies into the residential areas and medical areas to actually inspect the stocks and then all that was made online so now they were the uh, pharmacies were told to make the stocks um, visible online so that they cannot hide uh, that uh, stock that they are having and they cannot overprice also and sometimes where people who could not move out and they needed urgent medicines even door delivery was organized by our uh, our own departmental people uh, another uh, issue was very serious issue was that uh, poor people particularly they lost their livelihood they did not have reserves and they wanted basic uh, food for um, survival and um, how would you know as to who is the one who needs uh, food now not everybody will make a call to you and not everybody would know that uh, this is the system available so apart from iec so why we did do lot of uh, publicity as to you know this is this is the uh, effort done by the state government food kits are provided you call up this number or contact us uh, apart from that uh, the ngos were involved and so on but the point was that we needed to know as to who are the poor people and therefore what we did was that in uh, particularly rural areas 
there is a socioeconomic caste census data that we have available. So what we try to look into those underprivileged uh, set of people and the panchayats were told to form a, 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 a task force, local task force, and see that those people, whether SC, ST, or some uh, elderly men, women, and uh, you know, single women uh, has households like that, they were all supposed to contact them, find them, find their requirements, and then do the door delivery. So similarly, things were done in the urban area as well. The other major issue all the states have uh, actually suffered is the migrant labor issue. And uh, they need both food and shelter. They don't know where to go. And earlier, you know, they were on the work sites, but suddenly all the work stopped. So the contractors ran away and they could not come. Even if they wanted to, they could not come back to the work site because of lockdown. And these people were left nowhere. Uh, so they were the ones who were brought to uh, a particular shelter. We used all our uh, uh, hostels um, of the department to make them uh, uh, stay there and provide them cooked food and so on. Uh, now, the issue was that how do you know who is the migrant labor? Where is he or she? And what numbers and what provision you have to do? There's no clue. Because unfortunately, that kind of database is not available. So uh, we again tried to search through various databases that we have. And um, I, I must admit that uh, there, is a, uh, there is a paucity of that data. We don't have that data uh, in either central or uh, state level uh, databases. And we were uh, somehow trying to, um, uh, you know, just do some trial and error. So we tried to talk to all the you know uh, construction site people particularly in city like bangalore that's the large number where construction workers are the ones who are generally uh, belonging to this category so we have a construction uh, workers uh, welfare board and there are many people who are registered in that and we could take the data and some of them had their phone numbers registered some of the phone numbers were also becoming uh, you know un, un um, responsive so that's how we got to know where all people were there, uh, which all sites they were there, and they were trying to reach out in different uh, methods. Then we involved a lot of um, CSR funds and NGOs. So on one side, we used this opportunity to set right our databases. On the other side, we have set up a, a, a platform uh, and a portal where we have tried to link the work of the government towards labor uh, welfare activity with that of the CSR funds and the NGOs who would do the outreach uh, with the help of the government uh, departments. So this is now something which is a sustainable thing. So even in future, we get uh, issues of any disaster types. So these are the people we have enlisted these NGOs. Now we also went to, for example, Darpan portal. There are 5,200 uh, NGOs who are registered for different uh, areas. So now we have that database and we have their contact numbers and we can immediately, you know, seek their uh, help wherever it is required. We can train them also in the days to come for handling different uh, types of situations. So that is something which will go a long way in handling issues like this. Uh, health grievance, as you know, was a huge uh, problem. Uh, mainly people, everybody was concerned with health issue. And uh, we found that um, the 104 helpline, which was actually having a capacity of 20 to 30,000 calls a day, would get more than a lakh calls. And obviously it broke. So it could not, you know, take that uh, kind of a, a rush. So what uh, immediately came to our uh, help was uh, a voluntary uh, uh, service given by medical doctors, private medical doctors. Step one company uh, offered, you know, a platform where uh, 104 would be linked with an IVRS uh, facility, and then we could break the, you know, calls into requirements because people, even with non-health issue, will call up 104. They don't know where else to go because 100 number is the other number they know. Uh, that's police number, but police will not handle uh, issues like a food packet and stuff like that. But uh, let me tell you that a uh, lot of voluntary help has come forward, particularly from the medical community, even those who were not in the government sector. And uh, we have been able to satisfy people on the telemedicine front 
uh, to a large extent. So whosoever wa wanted a doctor to be consulted, we would take that number on from the helpline, pass it on to the uh, the the platform of the doctors, and as per their convenience, they would call back. At their cost, they would call back that uh, person and give a one-to-one -one kind of a um, consultation and tell them what is to be done. And in case, again, some medicines were to be given or a fever clinic, the transport needs to be given, all that was organized in one big loop. So it's a very beautiful arrangement which has come in. And I feel that for the days to come also, now that situation comes back to normal, if at all, uh, in days to come, we must have a supportive uh, interactive kind of a platform between private sector and government sector so that we work together in whichever area of uh, coverage that we have so that overall the citizen does not uh, feel you know neglected or uh, deprived of the medical facility uh, so it's a very good example that the uh, community has set up and it should be continued uh, in future as well um, ambulances as you know we have limited ambulances we have one ambulance for about 10 kilometer um, uh, radius, but here, since no other vehicle was available for any medical requirement, and even sometimes non-medical requirement also, we had to, uh, I mean, non-COVID requirement also, we needed these ambulances. So the 108 management uh, tried to get in more of uh, private ambulances into the loop, and they tried to get engage some of the Maruti vans, which were converted into ambulances. Then capacity building of a lot of people was done to uh, engage themselves in this kind of service. So they were able to uh, then take care of the calls because 108 is like uh, other things probably can wait for 24 hours, but this will be like golden hour. Every hour, every minute is very, very critical. I, I, I'm, I'm very glad to say that uh, fantastic service has been done by the ambulance people by uh, extending their, uh, this, their capacity. Uh, similarly, we had a lot of people facing anxiety. So I may not be having COVID, uh, this thing, but just by listening to that thing uh, day in, day out in the TV and media and all that, uh, many people start getting uh, mental health problems. So almost about 40,000 people, which includes the about 4,000 people who were uh, uh, found to be COVID uh, positive, uh, were all given mental health counseling through a telemedicine approach. And uh, this works 24 seven, all these helplines, they work 24 seven. So sometimes in the night, sometimes during the early morning, sometimes during the day, the uh, counseling has been done and that has helped to a great extent. In recoveries, we have in fact documented this, that mental health counseling has um, uh, ensured that the recovery is much faster and the uh, problems like suicide or some of these crimes also sometimes, all that can be uh, mitigated by proper counseling by the, uh, the, the qualified people. And uh, we have some of those emergency requirements where people are stranded and they need police uh, permission. So initially people were calling up 100 and 100 was chock-a-block. Uh, how many calls can it take? But everybody was uh, trying to call that number. So there was a system which was developed by the police department it is called ePass. It's an online system where you, you can just log into your requirements. You can give your Aadhaar card or some uh, identity and you can mention why do you need this. And there were officers from the police department who would sit through these uh, you know, requirements and requests and immediately ensure. So lakhs of ePasses were issued. And as a result, I feel that the normal life of the people was not really you know, uh, under distress. Uh, despite all the uh, contingencies which have uh, been existing. Um, and the major uh, factor in this case was the fruits, vegetables, groceries, etc. Because uh, people don't have that stock in the house and fruits and vegetables, after all, how long can you really store also in your fridge? So every two to three days, you need another uh, fresh supply. So we had, again, an excellent uh, innovation uh, done by our horticulture department by linking the farmer directly to the market uh, in the city particularly. And uh, that ensured that uh, farmers don't uh, uh, incur losses. And at the same time, the city dwellers also get all their uh, requirements in the, um, uh, again, at the doorsteps. So this, is, this has led to our developing 
an app where we link uh, farmers and the uh, market demand site uh, on a continuous basis. So national uh, e-market uh, exchange has come forward with that platform and we're trying to now uh, put it on a, on a permanent basis. So uh, till now it was uh, for non-perishables, commodity exchanges were there. Now we are taking it to perishable commodities as well. So this will help again in the long run uh, and um, we look at also processing part of it or uh, setting up MSMEs uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, creating some uh, good, uh, uh, greater shelf life, uh, nutritional uh, food items, and then linking it to the marketing uh, facilities and so on. Another thing we found was that uh, when the packages for uh, uh, Prime Minister's Garib Kalyan scheme was announced and it was sent through DBT, uh, People didn't really know who, to whom it is going, to how many people is going. And we used to get a lot of calls. I have still not received any amount in my bank. Somebody will say, I, I don't know whether I've got it in my bank because I don't have any wherewithal to go to the bank and find out whether the amount has got actually uh, credited to my account. And even if I have got the amount in my bank, I can't go to the bank and get it. So again, the task force that was created in the village level, or ward level, uh, they would, on behalf of the uh, citizens, go to the banks or the post offices or to the ATMs, and sometimes mobile ATMs were organized where uh, people could be given the facility of taking the cash in hand without any hassle. Uh, so I have just given a couple of examples, but they're huge, as I said, lakhs and lakhs every day. Um, so. I just wanted to put together what were the challenges faced, both from the point of view of administration as well as you know, from the point of view of uh, the citizen. So mainly citizen, I would say that so many helplines uh, actually are very confusing for them. They can't remember the numbers. Howsoever much uh, of publicity that we are doing, it is very difficult to remember at that time. So for, I, I, didn't, I don't have a gas cylinder, which one, which number should I ring and, and, and so on. As a result, what happens is that they they generally call up the numbers which are uh, small numbers which are easily remembered. So a lot of uh, connectivity at the back end was required uh, for, among the helplines. A lot of coordination had to be done, uh, and we wanted to show a single face to the citizen. So if he or she has called up, let us say 104 for non-medical thing, we will not tell him or her that, oh, no, no, this is not the number you call another number, no. We will either shift that number to the second uh, uh, concerned helpline or we will call up um, from that helpline to this person and and see that they are able to immediately attend to uh, the calls um, and, and provide relief to the people. Um, so what we did uh, while all this was happening, we tried to look for a data which are of different types. Somebody is having a, a complaint to Dressel management system, somebody doesn't have. Somebody is only taking it in a, an Excel sheet, another person is only taking it in a Google sheet. But how do you put it together? So we came across a software which is called Freshdesk, and this is able to take, you know, an, a data entry made at 104 in real time basis, and a data entry made in, uh, let us say, uh, 1098. It can take it online and it can keep on giving us the numbers on the dashboard as to how many have come, how many, and the analytics also, the the bar charts and the line graphs. So we know where it is happening, where is the blockade and so on. So that is one which I feel is an opportunity and uh, well utilized and this will go a long way in interlinking all our uh, helplines in one platform and give better efficient monitoring of the grievance redressal. 
another uh, again a long term uh, thing which will come which has come across is that uh, apart from number 100 112 is another platform by the ministry of home affairs for the entire country like in uh, us you have 911 and uk you have one a single number you we, we in for india 112 is going to be the uh, platform and for this uh, our uh, minister of state for um, public grievances at uh, government of india uh, he took the lead and he said we will uh, make that uh, single platform functional in days to come so that anybody calling 112 can then get you know categorized his call or her call can get categorized to whichever other uh, helpline that exists and then the same platform will respond to the citizens as a single uh, point of contact so hopefully in the days to come not only in karnataka in the other states also the single platform will come and that will be a i would say a gift of covid in a way um, yes. that uh, single uh, you know grievance redressal uh, system and people can remember this number like any other uh, country uh, which is doing it, it already this uh, internship program was another very very um, innovative uh, uh, action uh, as you know in niti ayoga did uh, this kind of an exercise at the central level so our chief secretary asked us to do the same thing for uh, karnataka and as you know most of the post graduate people were all at home and they were all either working uh, at home or were waiting to Uh, have the institutions get started again so they were all available uh, and interested to help the government uh, so we advertised this um, platform and we said you can go to seva sindhu uh, and you can just put your application online and we will be very happy to have your uh, feedback your study your research done and um, particularly in this situation and as you know that after covid or after this in uh, disaster pandemic we have lot of challenges coming up in the economy in the farming sector in the employment sector and so on so i am very happy to say about 300 within within i think 4 or 5 days we got about 350 people uh, volunteering post graduates and very very qualified people uh, volunteering for this so immediately looking at their bio data and the areas of interest we have handed them over to uh, all the different departments and each department secretary is now interacting with these uh, youngsters and they are all trying to work together to find out innovative solutions to um, uh, the this situation that uh, we find ourselves in and for the days to come so somebody is working on let us say um, tourism how would tourism be in days to come with, with, with all those social distancing and all those infection uh, threats will people actually take to uh, international tourism or even interstate tourism as people are so scared now so how can you make it safe at the same time uh, also the livelihood of the people who are dependent on them uh, how can they really uh, maybe they they will have to also diversify their skills so Uh, these are the kind of things there is another very interesting thing going on with the uh, triple it bangalore with all the computer uh, science people uh, trying to help us in doing lot of predictive analysis so we look at data on how many cases have come how many are symptomatic symptomatic age wise this that all kinds of analytics and based on the analytics uh, we try to do the predictive analysis and based on the predictive analysis we are able to uh, make our uh, health management strategies work much better uh, so these are um, some of the uh, initiatives which are happening across so this is where i as planning department um, secretary can really coordinate with all other departments to uh, get them going and uh, last of all uh, we are going to very soon launch an idea platform as i said something already exists but this situation has made us do something on a sustainable basis so we we are creating an idea platform on uh, our web uh, planning department website where not just interns interns will be locked in for say 3 months time but uh, anybody now all the viewers of this uh, webinar uh, may like to have some innovative solution for uh, different uh, situations and we would like again our knowledge economy to be encashed and uh, i'm sure some very very sensible very very useful ideas come in 
So through this platform also, I uh, request uh, you know, all our viewers uh, to uh, contribute their ideas to different um, situations. And we have listed some of the sustainable development goals uh, and their uh, you know, uh, impact on um, the day-to-day -day activities of, the, of our livelihood and uh, sustenance. So I uh, would welcome the crowdsourcing uh, of ideas and uh, we will all put it to the best use uh, for public interest. And uh, finally, this is the, an appeal from um, the chief minister of our uh, um, state. Um, and we, we have been requesting uh, people to donate funds or support in kind or give their volunteer services. So uh, I must end with uh, a word of thanks to all the people who have helped in kind cash and by all means and i'm ho i hope uh, to a large extent we have been able to cater to the grievances of the people and have been able to make their life more livable uh, despite all odds so thank you once again for this opportunity fantastic uh, thank you dr shalli for this amazing presentation where uh, so uh, many different departments are actually collaborative and come on a single platform uh, to help the citizens to make the grievances of the citizens uh, easily addressable, easily accessible to all uh, departments and doing some analytic, analytics on this. The question to you is, is that uh, many of our departments are used to work in silos. Uh, they are not collaborating and they are uh, and the data sets I think you mentioned Someone is mentioning in Excel, someone in the CRM, and they are all using different softwares. So, how uh, challenging was it to integ integrate all these data sets and uh, different data formats? Also, I think data standards uh, might also have been different in different departments. If you can talk about that. Well, as far as uh, at least the willingness part of it is concerned, everybody is very open to sharing of data and very open to change. So if uh, you know they were following, uh, let us say, Google uh, spreadsheet, and I asked them to move on to the fresh test with a little training, online training, they've all uh, done it very fast. And fortunately, we are in the IT capital of the country. Yes. Uh, we our, our uh, IT skills of most of the department people also are very good. So I found them very very uh, positive on this front, and that's what made me, uh, you know, actually ha help uh, me ha actually do it. And uh, you have earlier worked in the health department yourself, and you have uh, a lot of experience of handling the health issues. And uh, COVID-19 being a health crisis uh, to start with, and after that, it became uh, other uh, crisis of uh, multiple dimensions. So, how did that health experience help you in handling the, this uh, uh, project itself? Uh, it was it was very handy because uh, I was knowing almost all the doctors and uh, all the departmental people, uh, all the helpline people. So it was very easy for me to communicate uh, with all the concerned and get the work done very fast. Um, you know, because I would have their numbers already with me. So I don't have to look for it because during this time of lockdown, there was no staff available. So we were all one all in one uh, using our own resources. So it really came very handy. Uh, I would also say that apart from the usual health uh, thing, which was headed by the additional chief secretary, my batchmate in health department, Mr. Javed Akhtar, very ably handled uh, there and of course with the uh, guidance of the chief secretary. Uh, I was also trying to focus a lot on the Ayush part of it. So in the, in the uh, awareness building, we were trying to tell people to build their immunity uh, mm. by, you know, very simple uh, whether Ayush uh, practices, whether it is just drinking uh, some good uh, concoction of uh, spices and herbs and um, uh, taking steam and uh, apart from, you know, hand wash and uh, mask that has been medically examined, then also doing pranayam, yoga, uh, just to build your uh, website, take a little more of sunlight, uh, things like that. So wherever the opportunities were there, we're trying to tell people, look, don't wait for you to be a, become a bait of COVID. Uh, you strengthen your immunity, use this time uh, an opportunity to build up your health uh, to 
face not not just covid tomorrow it may be dengue and day after it may be something else so we have to strengthen ourselves uh, to do uh, to to be able to battle the virus uh, we have been uh, like uh, reading about that government uh, can use data analytics uh, predictive data analytics big data all that stuff but uh, there are not many actual cases of actually happening this so uh, do you uh, think uh, that yes. this was a project of uh, that dimension certainly uh, in fact uh, even before covid situation uh, planning department government of karnataka has initiated uh, a center for open data research sure. and uh, we have got a, uh, an mou with triple uh, it bangalore and uh, the uh, memorandum of understanding is that planning department will try to collect and collate different databases of different departments and put them together in one uh, platform of the e governance department it is called karnataka open data initiative mm -hmm. and we are trying to now pull out one by one one by one the databases put it in the kodi and then from kodi the triple itb will take the data and do the analytics as per our requirements so planning department will tell them look i have to handle malnutrition issue or i have to handle this issue that issue so that kind of data sets will be pulled out of kodi and handed over to them so already that is being done in in terms of covid again we kind of heightened that activity and it is going to continue over the days to come particularly for the sdg uh, you know goals and uh, targets it is going to be very useful because we have to focus our uh, efforts into very very essential areas and priority areas we can't spread our resources and efforts across the state so if it is a problem in a tribal area we need to find the interrelationship between you know so many factors and see to it that we do a, a whole hog uh, kind of an attack on that problem and solve it yes. uh, as you mentioned the uh... the topic of sdgs and we are aware that your department has been working on it for many years if you can bit of explain about it that what are the initiatives uh, your department is looking at on the sdg front uh, certainly as we all know that sustainable development goals are set up by the united nations and it is called generally agenda 2030 which means by the year 2030 the uh, 193 countries which have signatories to this uh, agreement uh, should achieve a certain level of uh, human dignity and human uh, quality of life and which which is very critical to the planet uh, you know the well-being of the planet as a whole so it's not a question of a b or c but it's question of the entire humanity so in this regard a planning department works with all the uh, departments of the state uh, there are about 600 odd uh, indicators which have been broken up out of the 17 goals which have been given by the united nations with i'm just telling you the numbers because it is that kind of a micro level minute monitoring so we have a uh, a platform where every month we monitor the uh, the progress made with a bit the targets which we have set up so for the next 10 years the targets have been broken up so that slowly and steadily we reach uh, to the level we are supposed to reach by 2030 and uh, the i'm i'm very happy to say that uh, the the all the departments have understood the you know the importance of these and we are now moving away from the outputs output based kind of you know uh, uh, program implementation to outcome based up. that means i don't have to calculate how many people were given employment under narega but i have to calculate i have to uh, uh, quantify as to how many people are still unemployed you see so that's the outcome i don't want my target is zero unemployment let us say by 2030 so i must ensure that i move uh, continuously toward that goal that outcome and uh, now we start measuring the outcomes uh, sometimes there is a qualitative data sometimes there is a quantitative data and everybody has to be sensitized to this because earlier you know all government departments were happy giving physical and financial figures how much i spent was more important than what actually happened so we are now looking at that qualitative data 
And as you mentioned about SDGs and uh, you also mentioned about open data, let me ask you that uh, 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 there are multiple uh, organizations in the state, state government who are collecting tons of data. Uh, sure. And uh, many of these data are being collected in different formats, different standards, different frequencies. Some is monthly, some is weekly, some is half yearly, some is yearly. And to collate all these is, is not easy. Uh, to get some sense out of it, get some analytics out of it is not easy at all. So uh, for the benefit of our viewers, you can explain about what is the role of data uh, collection, data compilation, and data analysis and standards uh, for uh, uh, setting goals like SDG, SDGs and also monitoring the outcome based monitoring. So if you can highlight that, it will be very nice. Certainly. As you know, uh, now the, uh, you know, this data uh, registration has been made compulsory. So uh, anybody who is having any source of data, which is public uh, data, has to be registered with a single agency. And that has to be, again, protected from the privacy point of view and then put into the public domain wherever it is public oriented data in a single platform. So the KODI initiative that I talked is in the same direction. Uh, now data collation has already started. We are now looking at uh, anal analyzing this data from the beneficiary point of view, from the spatial point of view. So GIS is another dimension we have added to. Uh, not everybody understands textual data. So very nicely you can just uh, put it on the GIS. So I would uh, invite people to visit the GIS portal, KGIS, Karnataka GIS portal, and you'll find that there is a there is a huge uh, data which from all all uh, uh, departments which has been put together, and not just in table form but also in a spatial form. In addition, we have provided a facility from um, of query building. So I also invite all the researchers to uh, use this data, put in your queries. If, if uh, that query is not answered, we can build up the report for you and provide. So I feel that this data is today, now we can organize and put it, it's time to monetize this data. There's a huge opportunity waiting in it. One of the very simple things which I mentioned already is that you have so much of agriculture and horticulture produce, but the same is not processed or same is not marketed. So the business people who are looking for business opportunities, here is the opportunity. You know in which area, what is being grown, whether grapes are being grown or mangoes are being grown or pineapples are being grown and what they can be converted to, how value can be added, where they can be marketed, you can look at it from all those angles. And I feel that this data uh, provided in one platform can lead to a wonderful economic uh, revival um, and economic uh, activity spurt. And uh, uh, there are cases uh, globally where governments have uh, used these open data platforms for uh, involving the startups in one of the That's private right. sector. Startups uh, can use uh, to make it, uh, make apps out of it, which are useful. So, uh, are like each age of department like looking at these opportunities and also with the researchers. Like if you uh, talk about the people who are doing PhD and uh, they are uh, say doing research on agriculture and yeah. they will have a uh, challenge in having access to the right data. So, each uh, your department is looking at collaborating with research institutions, startups, and the industry. This Certainly. Certainly, this uh, Center for Open Data Research that I mentioned to you, uh, apart from uh, ITB, we have the NASCOM uh, people, that means the ITBT uh, uh, startup hub that, uh, that is done with, uh, in collaboration with NASCOM. Uh, and we have about 30,000 uh, people who are registered on this, uh, on the startup side. We have offered all this data to them and asked them to look at, you know, apps and business opportunities. And at the same time, we are also having a collaboration of Public Affairs Center. Public Affairs Center is looking after, again, the analytics from the social perspective side of it. So uh, on the welfare side of it. So we have all these uh, different stakeholders 
we have isaac we have indian institute of science we have um, nias so like that all the uh, i am bangalore we have all the stakeholders you know participate in this kind of an initiative and i'm sure uh, it will be made available to all those who would like to make use of it there is a like there, is, there are questions on your screen if you can look at it the q and a button and mm -hmm. uh, there is a question which straight away relates to what you just spoke about the question that ashok yeah said, ashok I, yeah he has spoken about you know uh, how not to get overwhelmed and uh, we live it as a normal situation so i as i mentioned that uh, you know the um, uh, one is you have to build your immunity and second is this counseling that online counseling that happens so we tell them that to take it easy you know it it comes and goes so this is this is how we tend to uh, handle uh, the community on the pandemics and um, the another question by arpit gupta says that how did your rich experience in health department come in handy you have already asked this yes, uh, yes. and i have answered it yes. and um, then sawik uh, goswami is saying that being a policy maker with vast experience in governance what's your opinion on the way india handled covid and lockdown as a governance model so uh, well i i think uh, uh, i would not be able to really comment on india as a whole but i think uh, it's for all of you to see that um india has been uh, you know getting real accolades across the world for uh, a timely lockdown for a very swift uh, you know policy kind of announcements and uh, from time to time so i know that all my colleagues um, have been working day and night uh, you know to see to it that you know to anticipate what the issues could be trying to get experience from across the world uh, as to you know how italy is handling how uh, china would have handled or how america is handling what not to do and what could be done and i'm sure um, you know i i know that for the last two months we've hardly slept uh, it's been going on like a 24/7 uh, thing every minute every day there is a new challenge and then there is a new decision and uh, things have been happening all people i would say across you know whether it is the medical community or it is the civilian uh, people or the community at large everybody has been uh, thankfully very collaborative so suppose if you make a law that you have to use masks people are following it by and large they are following it if you say that in uh, there's a curfew between 7 to 7 you find that uh, there's hardly any vehicle after 7 right so people are you know understanding that whatever government is doing is for their uh, larger good and they have to cooperate ultimately you see how many policemen one is to thousand is a policeman if you uh, don't self discipline then how much can the police force really uh, help you so uh, you can see that you know with the existing police uh, staff with the existing medical staff we've been able to handle such a huge challenge uh, for so many uh, days together so i'm sure um in the days to come also we we will be certainly uh, learning from others experiences and others mistakes and we are certainly open to uh, more and more uh, of uh, positive changes that should happen and that is why i said i welcome from the viewers uh, your ideas uh, your innovations your suggestions and we'll be very happy to uh, accept and uh, implement them for the larger good So I've taken all your questions. Some more questions yes. have come. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. There's a question that uh, how are you using IT and advanced uh, technologies in handling grievances in these times? You can read out, uh, read out. Mr. Ravi. Yes, yes, out. yes, 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 yes. I was reading that. So. Oh yeah, Harsha, Harsha hmm. Desai has said that. Uh, tell us about the role IT and advanced technologies. i have done that. so i think my entire presentation has been on it uh, yes. platform because yes. uh, a scale like this and in india anything is a big scale so yes. without it it is uh, absolutely you know impossible to handle situation like this so uh, some of the examples if you have missed the initial discussion is that you know whether talking of e pass system or talking of e market uh, for the fruits and vegetables also or uh, integrating the helplines um, through fresh desk 
uh, on on all the call center uh, helpline data uh, and and so on so or seva sindhu platform which we have used for all the people who wanted to go out of the state or come into the state so there is one single platform so we know from maharashtra how many people are coming from karnataka or in which district how many people need to go to bihar how many need, need to go to madhya pradesh and then we can make arrangements whether we we need to organize a train or a bus or an individual transport so all these things help planners to uh, arrange you know uh, required uh, facilities for the public and without it platform i think it is in unthinkable so i think uh, one uh, point which is uh, different from uh, many other uh, uh, interactions we have done with the government officials across the states that every uh, like a lot of people have talked about hardware the cctv cameras the uh, various sensors and all the uh, phone calls monitoring what you are talking is more about data and software i think which is about the uh, different angle to it and you are talking and i spend nothing on it and i yes. spend nothing on it <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes, yes. That's right. That's, That's right. Indeed. Thankfully, thankfully, uh, while everything was locked down, our internet uh, was on, right. uh, yes. which kept us really connected to everybody, yes. and yes. Uh, we could, uh, you know, continue with our efforts. Fantastic. And I think I uh, like that statement. That it was not. Uh, we did not spend anything. Yeah. It was all. <laughs> all. Uh, I had no budget. Money. I had no budget yeah. at all. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, there is another question i think uh, priya uh, yadav from chandigarh has asked yeah. uh, please tell us about the highlights of tumkur smart city as you are also its chairperson uh, priya uh, you are from chandigarh and so am i initially uh, brought up there so very nice to be connected with you however i am no longer uh, chairperson of tumkur smart city i am now looking after chikmagalur district but uh, yes tumkur smart city and bangalore smart city you would have uh, heard of that um, the uh, war room that has been created by uh, you know the uh, smart city uh, people has uh, been very very useful for many things many things again more so on the data part of it than capacity building than uh, policy making and so many things so today in fact i think there is a webinar going on on yes. uh, from the uh, ud uh, yes. on on uh, war room of uh, bangalore smart city so uh, it was part of the smart city. see it's like how you are leveraging what you have for the situation so all these smart cities had created even tumkur smart city has created a uh, this integrated command and control center so where there was a provision made to integrate data or uh, from cctvs and drones and all that put it into these screens and have analytics built into it and so they have made excellent use of uh, that facility available in the smart city and bangalore was a very very badly affected uh, city in large numbers so they've been able to again use technology uh, for handling such a huge uh, situation and problem so the other question was also on smart city uh, tumkur yeah. i think Uh, this yes. answers um, yes. the problem yeah yes. any other question yeah uh, uh, there is below priya's a question there is a question uh, <coughs> okay hemangini uh, yeah. rajpur uh, hmm. tell us about the progress of development initiatives in your aspiration districts raichur and yadgi uh, very very uh, grateful for uh, uh, raising the issue of aspiration district Uh, there is another question on end to end gra- grievance redressal often implies multi departmental coordination what challenges you faced and how you ensured that the grievance does not get lost in the maze this is by mr k c mishra so and one more question i'll take all the answers together yes 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 op yes. arora says that in order to run industries the state need to get back migrants who move out of the state due to the pandemic what are your in- inputs all right so uh, i have just spoken about the um, uh, the issues uh, which were raised by mr kc mishra as far as aspiration districts is concerned um, uh, i think initially uh, the ceo of niti ayog also mentioned that many of the aspiration districts did not have uh, a single uh, case of covid uh, 19 and um, they were all green districts so they had uh, that way you know they were safer but now you know with the movement of people across 
um, uh, from different states. Yes, numbers are now coming even in green districts. So aspiration districts, again, uh, they have handled very well uh, the situation with all the limited resources that they had. All the deputy commissioners, I would say, hats off to their leadership. They have taken all the staff uh, in their uh, you know, uh, uh, command and uh, made best use of uh, uh, resources for the people. They make them calm, first of all, and make them assured and reassured that uh, there is no problem. This will be taken care of. So aspiration districts have certainly uh, taken a very good uh, uh, thing, and they're doing very well. Of course, they didn't have a smart city kind of uh, facility, but with limited resources, they've done a good job. Um, the question that was asked was on migrant labor. Uh, well, this is, uh, and if they migrate, what will happen to the economy of uh, the uh, state? Well, it was a very big concern. Uh, but then, as I said, whenever there is a, uh, a calamity, there is also an opportunity waiting for you. So no, opportunity lies with us now to build up our skills. I'll tell you an interesting case study. I'm, interest, I'm in, in charge of Chikmaglo district. So we had about 450 people coming into the district. And we had about 1,500 or something going out of the district. And we had about 1,000 laborers who came from Bangalore and uh, came back to Chikmaglo. Now, what we did was that while they were either in the quarantine or in the shelter, we do, did a quick skill survey of these people, right? Uh, some of them, uh, we did it uh, telephonically because we were not supposed to go closer to them. So we did a skill survey and uh, we found, uh, you know, that if there is a drain out of the state or a district, there is also a incoming uh, drain. And we tried to ask them, look, if, because many of them are now losing opportunities also. Suppose somebody was working in Tamil Nadu. Now, now he says, those guys have wound it up. Uh, what do I do? So we're trying to even do that matchmaking of the skills which are locally available. We are also trying to find out where there is a paucity of skill. For example, some of the industries. Um, we, we, even after we said, you please start your uh, industrial work, they're not able to start because the, the concerned skilled labor is not available. So again, it opens an opportunity for us to train people, local people, uh, to do the uh, you know, needful. So they can see, look at it from a positive side that in future, if we can create the same skilled manpower within our district, so as our Honorable Prime Minister said, Atmanirbhar, we can all be self-reliant. Starting from the village onwards, uh, each district can be self-reliant, each state can be self-reliant, and that's the way to go. So I hope uh, so any other question? there is uh, one last question on the chat button. There is a chat button. Mm. Yeah, I'll see there's that. A, yes. Yeah. So there is a question from Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. You can read it out. Uh -huh. Yes, I can read it out. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, that uh, 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 there are pregnant positive cases and I request you to share if there is any data on the management and where can be accepted as we are working on management procedures with food and herbs for pregnant uh, ladies under Max Plant Institute, Germany. So uh, this is a question by Professor Dr. Amita uh, Amina Adjil. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Amin yeah. Aitar is uh, working uh, with Karnataka government, uh, uh, but I, I, I have already put her across with the uh, Rajiv Gandhi, um, you know, uh, university. And uh, well, the point is that in Ayush, there is uh, a, a good promise of, you know, alternative medicines. And I personally believe a lot in alternative medicine. But again, the procedures that uh, you know ICMR and other uh, Ministry of Health has, so you can't really go ahead and do trials uh, without their permissions. So there is a proper procedure, and Dr. Amina Athar is very well aware of those. I'm sure anybody who has um, such uh, alternative uh, treatments and uh, possibilities of treatment has to go through that procedure and uh, it can be done. So I cannot really share the data of pregnant women. I can say how many are there, but um, to actually do the trials may not be possible straight away. Sure. sure. And I have a question in the end, like uh, it's not here. That's my, like, I'm asking the question that uh, 
this uh, crisis has uh, uh, shown us all that IT is important. People have been working from home, and you have just talked about data uh, analytics, data collection. Uh, uh, post COVID, do you see the rise of uh, uh, further rise of IT and uh, data analytics in the government that uh, and uh, will work from home also start happening in the government sector in a, a, a bigger way after the COVID? I think uh, you see, I, uh, TCS for example has already announced that for so many months to come they will prefer work from home. And many of the IT industry uh, is following suit. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And some of them have even said that productivity is better. Because mm. particularly in uh, you know big cities like Bangalore, person spending two and a half hours to reach office, you know, how much of unproductive uh, energy loss, I would say, that uh, that's happening. And if it can be saved, why not? Also, you see, it will lead to a lot of savings on account of uh, you don't have to hire huge uh, office spaces, right? If people can work from home, and IT certainly is an example. And I'm sure if it if it has to happen, it has to happen in Bangalore to begin with. Yes. Uh, we being the IT capital, so uh, working from home is certainly the new order of the day. And um, uh, we realize that you know I have, for example, a staff of 140 people, but I was managing it with maybe three or four people uh, last two months. So uh, mainly on, on the basis of the tools that you have. And uh, let me also add that my own daughter, who would uh, love to do the online classes. So she says, why do we have to go to school? <laughs> so <laughs> they're very happy. They're very happy. She's learning good enough and she's interacting. Um, she's happy. So, uh, so distance learning and uh, on -learn, online learning and all uh, could be the uh, you know, future of the country. Why not? But uh, my specific question was regarding the government, like uh, uh, work from home in government is not uh, popular enough. So uh, it's not popular, have... but we yeah. have a semblance of this uh, facility. We've got something called flexi hours. Okay. So for the group A uh, category people and uh, also for group B, there are there are certain uh, guidelines already available in the secretariat, for example, that you can work flexi hours. That means so many hours you have to do in a uh, week, let us say. So suppose I come at uh, nine, I can leave early. So I can leave by five. Or uh, if I come at 11.30, then I should leave by seven or so, something like that. So there is something called flexi hours available in the government. But as you rightly said, it's not so popular. Uh, over the uh, days, you know, maybe it will uh, take uh, shape. But the uh, the, again, uh, to, to do that, we have to shift to the e-office yes. uh, completely. Yes. So we, have, we, we had already started before uh, last year itself. Uh, we have started moving. So the order passed by government of Karnataka is that no new manual file will be created in the secretariat. So everything has to be done. So we started with the secretariat. Uh, every file will be newly created, will be an e-office file. So once it is on e-office, Anybody and everybody, whosoever, wherever they are, they can work on it. Uh, however, I think uh, many of my staff, for example, uh, uh, although they are conversant with the um, working of, on, on computer, but they don't have a laptop at home. They don't have a computer at home. So maybe some schemes like, like we have been earlier giving uh, loans for uh, a scooter, buying a scooter yes. or a home loan yeah. and all that. Maybe we have to give loans for uh, buying a computer. And uh, or a laptop, and that once they have that facility at home, only can they come online and work from home. So we have to create that facilitating uh, environment in the days to come. And uh, one more uh, last question, which I have, is that a lot of citizens have to access the government offices. A lot of uh, uh, citizen services are online already, but many still are not. So uh, do you see, uh, see that if we, if the social distancing is a norm in the next uh, stage. So uh, do you uh, think that more government services will happen online? Yes, yes. Honorable Chief Minister of Karnataka already took a meeting of all the secretaries. Uh, he has already initiated a lot of reforms in the wake of COVID-19, which need to be done in the days to come. And one of the reforms is this, that uh, 
uh, we should try to attempt even 100% of public services going online. And uh, with the mobile penetration, smartphone penetration being uh, you know, so high, uh, I'm sure uh, for the days to come, to, in keeping with the social distancing norms, uh, mm -hmm. people should be able to access more and more services online. And they don't have to visit the uh, offices. So it was pre-COVID uh, target also, but more okay. so post-COVID. Great. Fantastic. Uh, great to hear this. And Dr. Shalini, uh, thanks for an amazing presentation and amazing conversation. And uh, very uh, glad and amazed to uh, see that, uh, that how uh, Karnataka state has uh, risen to the occasion and uh, all departments have uh, come together uh, and uh, you have like steered this uh, data platform, open data platform and collated all the grievances together to address the uh, citizens issues so uh, i would like to thank the leadership of our honorable chief minister and our chief secretary uh, mm -hmm. for taking uh, you know the, the the leading role and guiding the entire bureaucracy to deliver uh, what was desired for the citizens at large thank you very much fantastic and uh, dr shalini uh, uh, we at elets at these challenging times trying to connect with uh, several departments across uh, states and understand how are they responding. Your uh, suggestions on our work uh, will be uh, grateful. Yeah. Certainly, I, I, as I said in the beginning itself that uh, ELETS has been able to stir up the knowledge economy and uh, it's, it's a really uh, very enlightening and very heartening that you have not, uh, you know, sat back uh, in the lockdown and you know, just watch, be a, be a, be a viewer. You have been a player in uh, all these and your, uh, you know, thought provoking uh, subjects where you are bringing in different stakeholders. You are trying to connect uh, the people with the government uh, machinery also on uh, issues which are of uh, great interest. Uh, certainly it, it goes a long way in helping both um, the government functionaries to get a citizen's perspective and citizens to get uh, the insights into what's happening in the government uh, sector. And, and that is the need of the hour. Uh, bridging the gap between the two is, is a very good uh, initiative. And I congratulate you and please keep it up. Thank you so much, Dr. Shalneji. And thank you all the audience for joining us here. And I will uh, request all the audience that if you like this uh, um, great uh, initiative of the Karnataka government on working on the citizen grievances effectively uh, through the usage of IT. I will request you to please like and share this video so that it reaches to lot more uh, departments, lot more states and even outside India uh, so that uh, these best practices are replicated. So with this, we will end this uh, uh, conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks to all. Namaskar. Thank